So we are moving into uh, the last few sessions of the main stage. Uh, if you have been here all day, you know that we started off by taking a look at how augmented reality is giving us superpowers. We transitioned into virtual reality in the middle of the day, um, throwing in a little bit of transhumanism into the mix with Zoltan Istvan, the US presidential candidate for the transhumanist party. And now we're moving into wearable technology and taking a look at how wearable technology fits into giving us superpowers, augmenting the human experience. And when Ori and I were taking a look at the uh, show this year, we really felt it was necessary to have all three of these technologies under one roof, really to celebrate how each of these are critical components of this new augmented future. And I think what you're going to see from these next few speakers is that these technologies really need to work in unison and in harmony in order to really do what this next wave of computing is all about. It's been called the Internet of Experiences for a reason. In fact, it seems as though we're trying to replicate all of our senses this time with the digital world. And that means that we're going to need to get access to all parts of our body. So we're going to kick things off with uh, Tony Shaheen, who's the CEO and founder from MyAnt. And um, he's going to be exploring the most wearable of wearables, textiles. The most natural solution from which we can extract data from our bodies is in form factors, of course, that we already use, like socks, underwear, sheets, car seats. And uh, these textiles, of course, have a high adoption rate. I mean, I don't think anybody else, in, is anybody here naked in the audience? No. Not, that's at the pool party at uh, 8 o'clock, maybe later today. Uh, so Tony's here to talk to us about what the opportunity is in functionalizing these textiles. So I'd like you to please join me in welcoming Tony Shaheen, CEO of Myant, to the stage. Thank you. Thanks for being with you. Thank you, Tom. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me figure this one out. Uh, I'm here to tell you today about my end and its role in making textile the most advanced um, material that could be used to the advancement of technologies. Before I go there, I want to tell you a bit of my own history and how I came to make this decision. I came to Canada in 1990. I left Lebanon when I was 25 years old. I studied electrical engineering. And within one year of being in Canada, I set up a uh, technology company that was specializing in manufacturing and assembling and retailing or selling power and batteries of all sorts in excess of 6,000 type of batteries at the time. It was very advanced. Um, the company was very successful. But in 2001, the company failed. That failure had set me back um, in so many ways then, and I had to go through bankruptcy, and I had to go through my own restructuring. It was very tough on me. And within one year, I learned every aspect of dealing with my own issues. I learned of every aspect of um, insolvency, restructuring, financing of troubled companies. A year after, I started doing lots of restructuring for textile and apparel companies. And within eight to nine years, I've done in excess of one and a half billion dollars of restructuring of textile and apparel companies. What I realized then, that every textile and every apparel company failed because they lack an ability to innovate or to make innovation happen quickly. So often these brands, and many of these brands that I've restructured were very successful. Often these brands, they start very successfully, and then within five to ten years, they lose track, and they can't keep up with competition. So given a bit of my background in, in technology, and now uh, eight to ten years in textile, um, restructuring and turnaround and positioning, 
I wanted to see if I can do something about this industry and make it relevant and make it sustainable in a way that could go the distance. So I started doing some homework and some research, and I was blown away when I started seeing some um, universities like Cornell, MIT, Drexel University, and University of Waterloo, they had lots of advancement in material science and some early prototypes of uh, yarn base, conductive yarn base or semiconductor or transistor uh, based um, yarn. Like Cornell had a patent on making a cotton based yarn embedded with nanoparticle to make it conductive. That was a massive innovation 10 years ago. And they also had a patent filed on transistor-based cotton yarn. But often those innovations were not scalable. They were not, you could not produce them in scale or you could not produce them. There was no machines to produce such a product. Given the supply chain of textile is far from being an innovative supply chain. Most uh, apparel or garment or textile based product are highly produced using skilled labor of assembly or cutting and sewing. Um, and it's not scalable or repeatable when you're trying to attach technology using yarn based product. And then I saw the opportunity there and I looked at some of the failed DARPA projects and then I acquired approximately 65 to 70 patents from many failed projects, and we started um, using, we started manipulating some of the technology, and fast forward, we have perfected many of them, and we're ready to launch a number of innovation and number of innovative products shortly. So why textile? I wanted, given my failure, I wanted to build a, an industry that could have a massive barrier and an ability to allow innovation without being concerned about supply chain for cheaper or massive competition. So textile is already in wide distribution. As Tom just recently said, no one is coming to conferences like this naked. It has a high adoption rate. The textiles are worn for entire life cycle from the moment you're born until the days of elderly. Um, just by way of illustration, and I think we made a mistake over here, just in North America alone, just in underwear and socks and t-shirts, we consume 10 billion units per year, just in North America, versus 2 billion units of cell phone worldwide just to give you the scale of the um, supply chain. It covers most body real estate most of the time, able to collect data from multiple source points. It's very comfortable, and it's able to read, analyze, and actuate from the same form factor. I want to read you one of my favorite quotes from um, a professor at MIT, Yoel Fink. A single fiber has the capability of a billion functions. What then is the possibility of textile? If you look at a single yarn, the yarn itself could have 80 filaments. Each filament could play a role. It could be like a coaxial kind of cable. You can do that in a yarn technology in a way, um, thank you, in a way that's very unique. You can take this yarn and you can have a conductive filament and some filament could be non-conductive to create insulation. And then you could knit or weave this kind of yarn in a specific way in order to create all type of applications. This is also an illustration produced by Drexel University showing structuring design where you can structure a knitting structure for all type of purpose. Also, you can see some of the development that they have currently right now 
where they're knitting a supercapacitor or an antenna using conductive textile yarn base. So with all of my finding in how significant the opportunity is, I wanted to bridge the gap. I wanted to make this industry um, beyond the Kickstarter campaign and beyond the uh, prototyping. I wanted to make actual product that you can sell for a reasonable price that people could buy and trade and again, sell in massive quantity. So first, I wanted to set up a team and a partnership. As I said, the te textile industry is highly focused on aesthetic uh, and on fitting. And when, whenever you're trying to add technology into it, you need, you need that gap to be very narrowed. You need cross-discipline in place in order to allow fashion designers to work with uh, electrical engineer or electronic engineer or a material scientist in order to create a system. That's how we can functionalize a product. Number two is R&D and rapid prototyping. In my own experience, initially, when we started, um, when we started Mayant, we wanted to produce product where the supply chain existed. And in the textile industry, supply chain exists predominantly in the Far East. We don't have any more supply base in North America. So that was very difficult because it meant I had to travel and I had to meet different factories and I had to do one part over here and another part somewhere else. And it was a nightmare trying to put all of that together. And often uh, you start with a good idea. By the time you finish a prototype, you get half of it, if any. And then three, I wanted to make sure I could produce this product in scale and I could produce it repeatedly. So let me first tell you about the team and the partnerships that we have. Currently, we have more than 70 staff uh, in-house, all in one location. So we have chemists, physicists. We have also industrial designers, fashion designers, user experience designers, or user interface designers. We also have engineers, mechanical engineers, computer engineers, and different engineers, and we put, we make sure the team is extremely coherent and in a constant, constant conversation. And how you do that is by making sure you have a place in your building where prototypes are happening daily. So in our facility, we have on, on the top left, that's a printed electronic uh, semi-clean room where we print all our own electronics. We print our own electroluminescent technology or our own sensors or electroactive polymers or stretch sensing using smart ink. Below, uh, we ha that's, that's a picture of one of our machines that could robotically knit a full garment, a seamless garment, without the need of linking the garment by hand. And then we have some of our cut and sew operation. We still also have sewers in place who can assemble a garment. Some of the applications still need some labor. And then three, we have an in-house supply chain. Now, in this facility over here, in, in, in this picture shows some of our robotic machines, how you can, how we can knit some of our product. Below we have a, an assembly line, and then obviously some of our logistics. So what are the possibilities? Currently, some of the product that we are working on are um, product that will be available shortly. They're not 10 years or five years away. They're product that will be available within the next 12 months. So you can see, for, by way of example, a legging or a base layer, if you will, for men or women. And one simple legging will have various uh, output or actual actuation. And the reason why we have that, because the customer, when they choose a technology, sometimes they choose it based on health issues. Someone who's diabetic, they need to measure swelling. But also the same person could be cold uh, or 
also the same person want to measure their heart rate and their calories. So you're not going to see the same person wearing three separate devices in order to complete that picture. So the beauty about textile, you could offer most of this technology in one product. By way of example, we have a hydration textile electrodes. We have ECG, so we can measure a heart rate, and then we can extract calories and, um, and different values. And then we have, we can also measure EMG, which is muscle rate, but we can also actuate, so we can deliver muscle stimulation if we need to. And then we measure compression or swelling. And that's very important for all type of applications, most of them in wellness and healthcare. But then the same garment could heat up. And it heats up in a way that you don't need, like what you have in the market today, like socks with each one has a power supply. This garment has one power supply on the waist and it will deliver power for each application accordingly. And then on the right, that's some of the work that Drexel University is working on. And that's an actual prototype, actually, that transmits data using a knitted antenna. Currently, there is a number of challenges with this antenna because it has a stretch value. So when it's stretched, it's going to change its value. So we're working around making that part of the antenna non-stretchable. But it has an ability to absorb Wi-Fi signals and convert it into electrical energy to power other devices. Our long-term view, we want to stay away from having plastic boxes and electronic devices attached to the garment and have a garment that's completely self-sufficient. You know, my goal is to offer technology to everyone possible. I believe technology enhances lives. And to do that, I want to make sure I want to create a product that has access, that, people, that is accessible to anyone, regardless of their age or shape or size or sex. And the beauty about a garment of reading technology, like no other form factor, you have multiple data from various points on the body that could give you a true picture if, if you want. You can rely on a Garmin to measure your breathing, to measure your ECG, to measure your EMG, your motion, your hydration. Um, you could measure your pressure. You can also measure force if you use it in concussion or things like this. But my personal goal is to make sure that I offer a reliable textile-based device that could extend data between loved one or between someone and their own body. 